So we have right now the pleasure of speaking to Jeff Orlowski, who is working on the film Chasing Ice, which is really a case study for uh, on film for impact. So Chasing Ice is the story of a photographer who has changed the way we understand climate change. By documenting glaciers around the world with innovative time-lapse cameras, Jason Bilal's uh, videos compress years into seconds and reveal climate change unlike ever seen before. The Chasing Ice team implemented an innovative distribution strategy that leveraged the old and new ways of independent film distribution, successfully balanced both financial and impact related goals, which is hard to do. The film has been seen by over 10 million people, was shortlisted for an Academy Award for Best Documentary, and nominated for an Academy Award for Best Original Song, featuring a performance by Scarlett Johansson. Uh, director Jeff Rolowski will be presenting the making of Chasing Ice as a case study for any organization looking to leverage impact for film. I got into this through still photography, and when I met this photographer James, all I wanted to do was follow him as a photographer. And um, I met this photographer James, and he had this idea to do time lapses, and he. Um, he built this time-lapse rig, uh, and this system that he designed, he built it in his uh, garage, in the basement of his garage, um, in order to be able to go out there and stand multiple years of really, really intense conditions, harsh conditions that uh, would be able to capture, so he could capture these changing glaciers. Um, he thought it would be a quick, easy project to set up, and uh, he got a bunch of equipment donated, and built 25 or 30 different camera rigs, and then the idea was to go out and install them. But for me, like I said, it was really just a matter of wanting to go out there and have these experiences to see Greenland. Um, this year is us ice climbing in Iceland. Um, and my first time ice climbing ever, it was like so ridiculously fun. Um, you can just crawl up and down a glacier. It just doesn't make any sense like to your brain. Um, we set up these time-lapse cameras. And the goal was for the cameras to shoot every hour of daylight for multiple years. And uh, we set up cameras in Iceland, Alaska, Greenland, and Glacier National Park. And after about a year and a half of following James and documenting this project, uh, I was pitching him regularly, we need to make a movie out of this. Like, the material is so good, we've got all this video footage that we've been shooting the whole time. The purpose wasn't for a documentary, the purpose of the video really was just for YouTube videos and promotional materials and to have an archive of it. And finally, after much convincing, James uh, let me go ahead and make the film about the project here. One of the challenges here is how do you package this environmental story in a way that people want to resonate with, want to follow, want to have interest in, want to see. Um, we tried, uh, it was a constant struggle, we were really trying to frame it in terms of the adventure and the beauty of the photography. And focusing on the cinematography and the still photography as being the showcase. Um, and that was actually, it turned out to be a very effective method to get people in the door. We weren't trying to push it out as an environmental film. Um, there's not a single reference to climate change itself in the trailer or in any of our marketing materials. And it's really framing in terms of here's the adventure of a photographer who's going on a quest to see the world. And through his lens, we get to see what's happening. Um, and clearly, the, the trailer itself is talking about how the glaciers are changing. Um, so that is kind of the secondary level of, of getting that education out there. But it's a matter of how we were packaging it and trying to frame it that way. Did you look at the marketing of Inconvenient Truths? Yes. Yeah, and how that was done and how that made Yeah, happen. we certainly studied Inconvenient Truth. That is a great case study there. Um, there are a handful of techniques that we did leverage. So, um, the big thing there is that it was this like first big piece on climate change, and it was the vice president making a stance on it. Um, so his name helped in a very, very huge way getting that film out there. Um, it helped in certain audiences and it hurt in other audiences. And there is debate as to what the net impact of his association with the issue is in terms of shifting opinion. Um, it is something where we've tried to learn as much as possible. 
black, you're seeing this huge image, and you're, you have a surround sound, and you have the experience of the film. Um, I got into film through photography, and I, I was never really envisioning myself being a filmmaker, but seeing the power of film as a medium has really just drawn me to it, made me want to keep working in film. It's the only art form that is, you basically turn everything else off, you turn your phones off, you go into a movie theater, you're saying, I'm going to dedicate an hour and a half to this experience, and I'm going to block everything else out. You don't have that on the internet, you don't have that if you go to a gallery or uh, see a sculpture. There are so many distractions in this world that film is the last place well, there's theater as well, but that's not scalable. Film is far more scalable, and it's something where we've been blown away by the impact. I don't even know where Chasing Ice is screened anymore. It just goes out there, and people are screening it left and right at festivals, at, you know, in 172 countries now it's screened. So it's something that can run its own. It's something where people are willing to put time and energy into shutting everything off and paying full attention to it. And there's something deeper that's going on, too, from just a, a pure human perspective. We are storytellers. Humans are storytellers. We started off doing this and sharing stories around the campfire. And film, the theater, the movie theater, is the closest thing that we still have to this campfire experience on a regular basis. The flickering light, the stories being shared, the communal 